He clocked me first on the platform, en route to the subway. I always stand out with a stick, but I'd had a good day, I'd had a great weekend, I was feeling peaceful. I was feeling like seeing the best in people, so I smiled politely and conferred on the lift's operation. I smiled politely when he explained it was his first time to this station. But as the tin trap travelled down and he continued to chat, I took advantage of a slight lull to symbolically turn my back by replacing my headphone. That universal code for, hey, this was nice, but now leave me alone. In a tunnel, he walks deliberately slowly to match my pace. He's got that affected, inquisitive look on his face, so I can tell he's gearing up to an inappropriate question. I briefly consider the stairs in desperation, but knowing that would only invoke a flurry of unhelpful concern. Instead, I just watch as the second lift's doors close on us while he turns and asks, So what did you do to yourself, then? I remove a headphone, irritated, but resigned to the gutting. You'd think by now I'd be prepared for this. You'd think by now I'd be at ease with this. But his words fall like hail at a picnic. Hard. And quickly. With no regard for their wake. An afternoon ruined from the instant of that first double take. I should have said something. Something other than the stock reply with the reluctant educator's sigh, the empty half-smile, the clinical tone, the short version, reserved for people I don't know. The key words are joints, genetic and pain. The key reactions, as always, that mix of pity and disdain. I'm trying to convey he should feel ashamed. As we both step out, into the cool evening light, headphone replaced, taxi rank in sight. But then, do you cycle much? I remove a headphone, incredulous. I beg your pardon? I'm sorry. Are you not entertained? Did I not perform my role to your liking? Why on earth would you ask me about cycling? I should have said something. Something other than mumble, not really. Put my shoulders back and hissed in his face or complained. I was just caught off guard. I didn't know how to explain in the space of two lifts and a 50-yard walk the concept of privilege, of why he felt so entitled to talk to me even when I was so clearly uninterested. Even when I was just trying to get home. So the next time a stranger asks why I need a stick, I'll just smile sweetly and say, oh, this, it's just for hitting ableists with, because I'm sure as hell not playing this part anymore. My insides scraped out into a heap on the floor. I know I said I stand out, but they don't see me at all.